Hey, Tim Frisch with a Frisch Perspective. In this video, I'm gonna be looking at whether the church is being persecuted in America right now with the COVID-19 situation. Now, the reason I'm bringing up this question is because I have been covering this story about John MacArthur and Grace Community Church taking a stand in California against the government restrictions, and they're continuing to meet as a church in spite of the restrictions in California. So initially, Grace Community Church did comply with government restrictions, and I was watching a broadcast from Grace to You back in April of this year where John MacArthur was sitting down with Phil Johnson, and they were talking about whether they should obey the government restrictions, and I'd like to play for you a little bit of what he had to say. Now, talk about the the rationale of the elders' decision to suspend our regular church services. I mean, you, you must have considered, what about Hebrews 10.25? Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves mm-hmm. together. Or, or Acts 5.29, we must obey God rather than men. Right. I was there, so I know we discussed those, those verses. Talk about that. Well, um, first of all, the clear demand of Scripture is to be subject to the powers that be because they're ordained of God. Romans 13. Romans 13. And First Peter talks about the same thing, honor the king and those who are in authority over you. God has set them in that authority. Um, the Apostle Paul t- tells Timothy that we're to be good citizens, that we're to be, live a quiet and peaceable life. We aren't rebels. We don't start protests. We don't defy the government. We conform. Um, we, we're we submissive to the government as, as basically ordained by God. So that was an easy call for us. What would have made a difference would have been if this was persecution of the church, if all of a sudden the government decided to shut down churches as an act of persecution against churches, we would defy that because now you're into Acts 5 where Peter actually says, do we obey God or men? You say we don't meet. God says we do. We must meet. You say don't preach the gospel. We say we must preach the gospel. So when the government gets to the point where it basically persecutes the church, the church has to take that persecution and still do what God has commanded the church to do. Now, when it comes to obeying the government, some people feel that John MacArthur has been disingenuous and kind of two-sided. But in trying to be fair and listening to what he's saying here, first of all, I think he's clear that he doesn't want to unnecessarily put people at risk. So if the government was right at the time and trying to be careful, he was willing to comply with that because he doesn't want to put people at great health risk. But even there, back in April, he does draw the line if it is a matter of persecution against the church and the church being told that they need to do this rather than obey what God says. So he does have that principle that he's bringing out here. But getting back to the issue of risk and whether this really is a dangerous health risk, it's interesting that even back in April, he did express doubt and suspicion as to how this was being handled. And you can hear that in this next clip. But uh, how it's going to end, I don't know. I I think in all honesty, the thing is over-exaggerated. I mean, we all know that. It, the initial reports were that 2 million to 4 million Americans could die. Now, as of today, it's down to 50,000, and that's less than died of the normal flu last year. So, you know, we've been dealing with information and misinformation and chaos and confusion and messed up models. So I don't know how they're going to resolve it, but my assumption would be that this is going to, the quarantine aspect of it, the stay-at-home aspect of it is going to shut down sooner rather than later. I would like to think that by May, things will start to loosen up and we'll certainly by the end of May, hopefully get back to meeting together. So something that I hear there, even back in April, is he felt that those numbers were really being uh, overblown or that the risk level was being overstated. But further along in this interview, he does talk more about the government and persecution. Now, on the other side of that equation, though, does it not concern you that uh, with all the government overreach and, and exaggerated, you know, 
predictions. And and even the mayor of New York said that he was going to permanently close churches if they didn't strictly adhere to the social distancing things. Does it, does it concern you that this could open the door to future persecution, that this could be a harbinger of bad things to come well, for the church. Look, from, from the perspective of the elites in our culture, the educated, the, the university, the literati, you could say, the elites, they hate Christianity. They hate Christianity because Christianity has morality that they completely reject. So they hate Christianity. So any excuse they could have for attacking us, I, I don't think they particularly care about attacking some religions because some, the, there are religions that aren't a threat to them that, that don't throw the Bible in their face and, the, and demand that people live according to the Word of God. So sure, uh, I mean, we're, I think as a nation and as a world, we're headed toward the persecution of the church. We're headed toward a greater hostility toward Christianity. Um, the government. We we've learned one thing for sure in the government's action that you don't ha you don't need an army to conquer a nation. All you need is fear. Mm. You don't need an army. You don't need a troop. You don't need to fire a shot. Just terrify people that they might die, and they'll all roll over uh, in complete compliance. They'll give up their freedoms. They'll put on silly masks. They'll put gloves on their hands, and they'll sit in their house for as long as you tell them to sit there. You can conquer an entire nation with fear. Right from the get-go, John MacArthur has said that if the church is being persecuted, they have to obey God rather than men. So that's clearly a principle that guides him. Also, the risk level and how serious the danger in is an issue for him too. But a real question that I am trying to ask here is, are we being persecuted? Because that is where he drew the line earlier. And it is an important question, is the church being persecuted? in this situation. Many people, and I know many people watching these videos feel, yes, the church is being targeted, and I can understand where people are coming from. But some people would say, well, the church isn't the only entity that's being restricted, and if you look at the California government website, it does talk about industry closures, statewide business closures, bars, pubs, brew pubs, and breweries, must close all operations both indoor and outdoor statewide. It goes on to say closure of indoor operations for some businesses in certain counties. Counties on the county monitoring list must close indoor operations for the following business sectors, events, and activities. Gyms and fitness centers like yoga and dance studios, places of worship and cultural ceremonies like weddings and funerals, offices for non-essential, non-critical infrastructure sectors, personal care facilities like nail salons and body waxing, shopping malls, hair salons and barber shops, higher education, lectures and student activities, see guidance below, shops that offer tattoos, piercings, and electrolysis may not operate outdoors and must close. So when it comes to the question of whether the church is being targeted and persecuted, this does come into play, that the government in California is putting restrictions on a lot of other businesses and entities, and in some cases saying those entities can't operate at all, whereas other places, including churches, can technically operate in certain ways. They just can't meet indoors in their normal facilities. So... There's a lot of debate here and a lot of opinions on this, but this is a question. Are churches really facing persecution? Now, I do want to comment specifically on what I think are a couple of big mistakes that the California government made that have exacerbated the situation. And the first one is that they allowed essentially protests to take place and not enforce their own guidelines. So that inconsistency created a big problem. The problem is that the California government did institute guidelines for social distancing. And back in July, early July, they were telling people, don't get together for 4th of July celebrations. But before that, there had been protests and the government hadn't enforced their guidelines. And so that created a stir and reaction because the California government was not being consistent. 
Another real problem, particularly in regard to churches as well as other entities, is that it made these restrictions indefinite when they re-shut down everything. And that was a real bone of contention. It's one thing to say, well, close down for this amount of time, and then we're going to try to reopen. We're going to do our best to reopen everything. But to say that here are the restrictions, and we're not going to tell you when it will end, really causes a lot of angst and suspicion. And so that's what a lot of churches in California are facing. And I can sympathize with that. I don't think that this situation is easy to stomach. And I can understand where people are coming from. Now, I do want to also say that your political orientation and point of view, as well as your view of the actual risk level of COVID-19, definitely plays into how you're going to look at this situation. So if you're politically oriented in such a way that you tend to want smaller government and you're more suspicious of government, then you're going to look at this a certain way or be more prone to look at it a certain way. If you are really scared about COVID-19 in the pandemic, if you really feel there is a high level of threat, it's definitely going to impact how you look at this situation. And I have to keep saying over and over again, it's so important that we are able to accurately assess the level of risk during this pandemic. And the numbers are going to continue to come in. And we have to be honest with those numbers and say, what is the real level of risk and act accordingly. But regardless of what people say about whether the church is actually being persecuted or not, when I bring up the issue of other entities and how other organizations are being treated, a very valid point is that we are getting back to the First Amendment. And that is actually the legal defense that Grace Community Church is making for themselves. And I talked about it in another video. And what they're bringing up here is that the government really has no prerogative and right to tell a church that it is not essential when the Constitution protects religious freedom and the right to assemble and practice our religion. So our constitutional rights are definitely at play here and something very important to consider. It was actually brought up with protesters that they have a right to assemble because it is a constitutional right. And the same could be said of churches. It is something that we see in the First Amendment. I have brought up, though, that there are some parameters on that, that, for example, if the government tells a church they can't meet in a certain building until it is up to code, that the reason the government could make a certain restriction like that is because the building is not deemed safe. Now, that church, of course, can still meet in other places, but they can't meet in that building until the building is safe. In this instance, though, the government is saying that various institutions, not just the church, but various institutions can't meet in their buildings because it is not safe to do so. But these institutions like churches can still meet in other ways, such as meeting outdoors. Now, I'm not saying that the code regulation thing is exactly the same as this situation. I hope everybody understands that I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that the government, the reasoning behind the code situation is that it has to do with safety. And so for some people, the argument is that the reasoning behind these restrictions is safety. However, it is definitely true that the First Amendment protects the right of people to peaceably assemble and to practice their religion. And that has to be taken very seriously. What is really troubling and a problem for a lot of us is that it seems like the government is assuming that churches and the citizens of this country will not act responsibly. But it seems to me that the burden of proof right now is on the government to show that there is a risk, a great level of risk, that would make it irresponsible for churches to meet indoors. If the government can actually prove that there is a great level of risk and that it's irresponsible to meet indoors, then it makes sense that there would be some restrictions. However, if the government can't prove that, then you have to trust citizens to act responsibly. And I think that's where a lot of people are coming from, and I really sympathize with that. Of course, we don't want to put people at undue risk. Of course, we don't want to endanger fellow humans and citizens. We want to care for them. But MacArthur's point, and I think it's pretty valid, is that one way to care for people is to allow them to come to church. It is a safe haven for people. It is a comfort for people. It is a place of hope for people. And so that is an important way we care for people 
is allowing them to come to church. And I really do believe that many churches, if the government allowed them to come, they would take necessary precautions. And if things really did legitimately get dangerous, then churches would take precautions to care for people and to protect them. So a lot of this comes down to how you view government and how you view personal responsibility, and I understand that. But when it comes to the question of whether the church is being persecuted and how well the defense for Grace Community Church will hold up, all of that yet remains to be seen. But I just wanted to share some of these thoughts with you. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below, but please try to keep your comments positive and edifying to the conversation. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to what I have to say from a fresh perspective.